for Advanced Diver Magazine and RebreatherWorld.com at DEMA 2010 here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I'm talking with Casey Ohmholtz for, with Nautilus Rebreathers. And Casey, I know you have something new to tell us about. First of all, thanks for talking with us. Oh, my pleasure. So Casey, um, this has always been a kind of exciting unit. Tell me, explain to me how, you know, take me through the unit. What do you, what, what, what we're, do we have? We're looking here at the intake side of the unit. This is the gas flowing from right to left. This is the overpressure valve on the system. This is the overpressure? It basically, this is a, a cage that covers over a silicone gasket. When the, when the pressure in the loop exceeds a maximum level, the, the gasket opens up like a, like a spring almost. And when the pressure decreases, it seals back down. And is this sort of unique to Nautilus? I don't think I've ever seen something like that before. It's the only OPV on the market like this. It's unique to Nautilus. Moving down the, the DSV, this is the lever that opens the system. You notice the finger tabs here and here allows a diver to open it just with one hand. Now, if you also notice on the DSV, there's a difference between the two, uh, the two nuts. One's marked with a left-hand thread and one's a right-hand thread, which helps a diver not make the mistake of reversing the, the flow of gas. This is the counterlung assembly. I see you have a count, a, a count along in your hands out here. Kind of, this is kind of a unique design. I really like this. <laughs> Go ahead and explain it. Well, it is a unique design. It's the only one like it again on the market. It's a compliant counterlung design. What does that mean? It means that the system wants to come back to form. What's the benefit of that? Well, first, the counterlung cannot become stuck shut, which that can be an issue. Secondly, as you stop in your breathing cycle and rest, the lung comes back to form, drawing gas from the exhaust side through the scrubber back into the intake lung. So it actually assists you on the next breath. And for cleaning, there's something really great here. You, you can, uh, this simple boat, remove this part of it, and then you just clean it while it's still inside the case? Basically, we put the sanitizing agent down the gate. It comes into the counter lung. We can reach in behind the counter lung and agitate the system, coating it. After it's sat and done its you know, disinfectant, we actually have a, a dump valve on the base of the counter lung that can be pulled, and all the solution will drain out that, that hole. Same thing for rinsing with fresh water. Very convenient. It, and also the other added benefit of this, of course, is if there was any water in the system, you can pressurize the system with diluent and purge any water out of the system during the dive. Very clever. This is the scrubber assembly. I know you have a scrubber uh, uh, cartridge right here. Go ahead and tell me how this works. Basically, gas flows from the exhaust side down into the, the scrubber chamber. The scrubber is positioned like this inside this amber bucket. Gas flows down the center of the core and radiates outward. Uh, if the scrubber's put in upside down, the system locks off so the diver can't be in a dangerous situation. If a diver damages the canister, the nylon mesh on the outside, rather than replacing the whole canister, they're able to replace just the insert. Very clever. And standard scrubber? Standard scrubber, just using granular Zorb. When the scrubber's in position inside this amber bucket, um, a diver can actually see if moisture's entered the system because it's transparent. Casey, I know one of the unique uh, parts that something you, you've changed this year is these gas blocks. Tell me about that. Well, in, in order to support technical dives, the diver needed options to put offboard gas into the system. So we developed a way with a, the existing back plate to pipe in offboard gas. A uh, diver can, can pipe in either one or two gases. Maybe they want to pipe, pipe in a nitrox mix, or maybe it's just a redundant oxygen and diluent supply. The system's designed so the gas comes in downstream of the solenoid and ADV. So we're not worried about salt crystallizing, clogging up an orifice, causing problems. The, the, any kind of moisture that's being injected from the quick disconnect that you're attaching underwater is just gonna go into the breathing loop. Um, the system's also designed with check valves on the low pressure side in the back. So if you added offboard gas and you had a critical failure in a regulator or a valve on the onboard tanks, the gas from the offboard tank won't just go back to the system through the original failure. One of the uh, most compelling features of this unit is this display and how it's set up. Tell me about that. Well, the Nautilus has a unique uh, console here in that everything the diver needs to operate the system or to check life support information is in one place. 
What we see here on top is actually a secondary and primary display powered by fiber optics. Again, the LEDs in the transmitter up top bring light information down to this, this console. Uh, we see our automation. We see both contents gauges, oxygen and diluent. And on the top of the system, here, we actually have our manual addition valves. We can actually add diluent or oxygen from the same handset. The nice thing about this system is that the, the system's always flooded with water. There's no electronics to go wrong. It can be banged about on the boat or the rocks, inadvertently, of course, um, and, and take quite a beating. Of course, it depends on who's diving, and some people more than others. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we're, we're trying to go for the broad masses here. <laughs> Thanks, Casey. <laughs> We've been talking with Casey Omho from Nautilus Rebreathers, and I'm Jeff Torres for Advanced Diver Magazine and RebreatherWorld.com here in Las Vegas, Nevada at DEMA 2010.